So um, really the basis of this is what is IB, what does IB stand for, and really what is IB at Florida Central High School. So IB stands for International Baccalaureate. It's an internationally recognized rigorous curriculum. And for us, it begins in the junior year. Um, the, the way that the program is set up is that uh, all of our IB courses are only to be taken during the junior and the senior year. In the freshman and the sophomore year, we have courses that are called honors courses. And we have regular courses. All of our honors courses in the, the freshman and the sophomore year become IB courses during the junior and the senior year. Okay? And like we said before, students have the option to take a few IB courses, no IB courses, or they can take six IB courses over the course of their junior and senior year and pursue what we call the IB diploma. And in the end, we'll talk about what the, the benefits of, of doing the full diploma might be. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to, to this a minute. Uh, and, and this is a graphic that, that IB has put out about the uh, approaches to teaching and learning. And we see a couple rings in there. And we see right on the, the outside of the approaches to teaching and learning is, is the core. And these are things that the uh, IB diploma student has to pursue. We see things like th theory of knowledge, extended essay, uh, CAS, which is creativity, activity, and service. And we'll get to what that is in a bit. And then you will also see in the ring outside of that is there are six areas. And we'll talk about what those six areas are if we decide that pursuing the diploma is, is something that's right for uh, our sons and our daughters. So I really want to start out in, in ninth grade. And in the past, we used to always be together, and, and this would be live. And so we'd be uh, in the cafeteria, and we'd actually ask for volunteers to come up. And we have these great poster boards. And we had seven people come up because there are seven hours in our day. And, and so they would hold the options for each one of these specific areas that we look at um, because we have seven hours in the day, we have seven people up there, but IB only has six groups. And we'll talk about what those, those different groups are as we go forward. But just looking at some, some ninth grade options, um, obviously we have English. Everyone has to take four years of English. So students can either take English 9 or they can take honors English 9. Uh, one of the things that we stress and we look at when we're scheduling students is the distinction between a regular class and an honors class. And this is something that you may have heard uh, before if your student is a little bit older and you went to eighth grade parents night, uh, or this is something that you'll likely hear again if you attend eighth grade parents night uh, later on. But the distinction really between uh, honors and, and, and regular in almost every course that we teach is going to be the pacing is probably going to be a little bit faster. We're probably going to be going into a little bit more depth than our honors courses. And if we're going to use English as an example, uh, English 9 may read a book that's 150 pages and honors English 9 may read a book that's 400 pages in the, in the same time frame. And so we're looking at just a faster pace, a little bit more depth for most of the honors courses that we offer. When students come into uh, Port of Central High School, they also uh, are going to be taking a, a foreign language. And most students have started either French or Spanish at middle school. And so most students, when they are freshmen, will either take French 2 or Spanish 2. Um, and, and the reason that I bring up French and Spanish is those are the two classes that we offer as IB courses during the junior and the senior year. There are other language classes that are offered by our district, Portage Central or Portage Northern offers, offers Latin. Um, and in the past we have, we've offered American Sign Language. Um, if we look at the next group, uh, all ninth graders have to take, um, modern American history or 
honors modern American history. And so as you go through this and you see these things, there are these options that students have in most of these courses, whether or not they want to take them as an honors course or whether they're going to take them as a, as a regular course. All freshmen in science have to take a semester of chemistry and a semester of physics, right? Um, we offer those both at the honors level, honors chemistry, honors physics. We put in here a math option, typically because everyone is, is, is in a different spot. Some kids come in ready for geometry, some kids come in uh, ready for uh, algebra two, and it depends on where they are in a sequence. Every math class that we offer freshman, sophomore year will eventually lead to an IB math class during the junior or the senior year. Okay. And then we put in here uh, health because it is we have to satisfy our health requirement to uh, graduate in the state of Michigan. And so we have two options for health. We have a semester health class and we have a full year freshman focus health class. Those are options for freshmen as, freshmen as well. And then, of course, that other uh, hour is, is open for electives, PE, seminar if students need it. And if we don't know what a seminar is, uh, it, it, it's a class where students have uh, the ability to work with a colleague, uh, time to get their homework done, uh, work on labs, things of that nature. And so um, I think a lot of our students, when they're getting into high school as freshmen, like to have a seminar to um, basically uh, feel like they can catch their breath uh, because high school tends to be quite a bit of a jump from from middle school for some students. And so uh, that began, we, we see that a lot of students are taking are taking seminars, right? Um, if we move on to 10th grade, it's going to look very similar in terms of what students are, are taking. Again, we see the distinction between regular and honors courses we offer at the English level, we offer English 10, or we can take honors 10. Uh, most of the students who took French 2 or Spanish 2 as freshmen move on to Spanish 2 or, or I'm sorry, French 3 or Spanish 3 during the sophomore year. Uh, sophomore year, all of our students for social studies take a semester of, of government and a semester of econ. We offer both of those at what we call the honors level. One of them is offered as an AP class, which stands for advanced placement. Uh, we have Honors Econ, but we offer AP Gov. Uh, there are four advanced placement classes that Portage Central offers. This is the only, or typically the first one that students are going to encounter, unless they're very advanced at math and they'd be taking something like an AP Calc or an AP Stats. Um, but the only, the, the four AP courses that we offer uh, are AP Government, AP Psychology, which I teach, uh, AP Calculus and AP Statistics. And so those are the only four. Every other technically honors course that we see at the junior and senior level are IB courses. Okay. And then of course during the, our math, or I'm sorry, we have a, a full year of biology as a sophomore that also can be taken as honors. In math, we keep plugging along. So if we took geometry last year, we move on to algebra two. Okay, uh, and then we have that sixth and the seventh hour, which we need to fill with with graduation requirements. We have fine arts requirements that we have to fulfill. We have uh, physical education requirements that we have to fill. We have uh, most students have to take uh, potentially a um, chem two or a physics two to be able to uh, graduate from Portage Central and and so what we what we see is that a lot of students are filling those last two and then of course there are electives okay good so far okay. all right before i jump into our junior and senior year i really want to talk about the distinction in ib between what we call sls and hls and next to every ib course it identifies whether the course is taught at a standard level or whether the course is taught at a higher level. A, and, and this is very easy to understand. Standard level courses for us are taught over the course of one year. Higher level courses uh, are taught over the course of, of two years. The only exception that we have in terms of 
higher level courses or two-year courses is our IB chemistry class and it is taught only in the senior year but it is taught in a two-hour block so every other HL class that is offered higher level IB course is taught over two years so the junior year we would take the first year of that HL course the senior year we would take the second year of that HL course and then if we're going to test in that we would test after the second year so that assessment that the students take at the end of those would occur at the end of of the second year okay one of the other things that i like to keep in mind before we start talking about junior and senior year is the idea of the ib diploma and ib says there are really two paths that we can uh, go through to get the IB diploma and their recommendation is that students schedule three standard level classes and three higher level classes over the course of their two years. That's really the recommended path. There is an option and this is the only other option that exists to do four higher level classes in two standard level classes. IB also says, in terms of assessments, that students can only take two SL uh, tests during the junior year. So when students are scheduling, it's important to look at which courses that they're taking which year, because IB says you can only take two SL tests or standard level tests during the junior year. So most students, that third SL, they end up taking during the senior year. So there's not a year gap between when they take the class and when they would have to take the assessment. Okay. And then of course, the other option, as you can see at the bottom is, you can be what we call a course candidate, which is you don't, you're not doing the full diploma, but you're picking and choosing the IB courses that, that you like or that you're interested in and that you wanna take. Okay. So let's look at the course offerings in the junior year. Okay. And before we go into this, I'm actually going to um, ask our, our guests, Alex and our two Mollies, to kind of give us a rundown of how they planned all three of these individuals these great students uh, are pursuing the full diploma they're seniors they had to make the decision about what their plan was whether it was three and three or four and two in terms of the sls and the hls and i'm curious to for them to be able to give you their perspective and 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 the decisions that they made in terms of what are their hls and what are their sls in terms of of planning before we do that i want to talk about the six ib groups that exist and this will be a, a good slide because this will help them say oh in group one this is what i took group two this is what i took so there are six ib groups that exist okay studies in language and literature we only offer one class in studies in language and literature it's english a literature that's the only class that we offer we only offer it as an hl because every single student at Puerto central high school has to have four years of english okay group two is our is language acquisition at Puerto central we offer french four spanish four french five and spanish five Okay, those are our language acquisition courses. And in this year, those are the only classes that students are taking assessments in. We have had kids in the past travel to Northern and take Latin. Uh, this year, we're not, we don't have any students that are, that are testing in Latin. Group three is called Individuals and Societies. And this is a group that, it, that has our history courses, our psychology courses, our business courses, all at the IB level. Group four is our sciences or our experimental sciences that incorporates um, chemistry, biology, physics. All three of those are taught only at the HL level. So that means they are two year courses with the exception of IB Chem, which is a two hour block the senior year. And then we have two additional um, IB science courses uh, IB Sports Science and IB Environmental Systems. Group five is, is our maths. Uh, IB's curriculum changed uh, last year and deviated from the old curriculum with math. And we have, have Math AA and Math AI. 
AA is more calculus based, AI is more statistics based. We offer AA at both the SL and HL level, AI is only taught at the SL level, so it's only a one year course. And then the last group is the arts. And we offer IB art, IB theater, IB music. Um, and what I wanna mention though, is if students decide to pursue the full diploma, they have to take a course in the first five groups. They have to. So group one, two, three, four, and five, they have to. They have the option of doing group six, which is the arts. If they are not interested in the arts, and that's not something that they wanna pursue, that sixth course can be doubled up in another area. And it is typically doubled up in either group three or group four. Okay. Um, Alex, can you go through these groups and kind of give us an idea of the courses that you took to satisfy each one of those groups? Yeah, sure. So um, I'll start with group six because I didn't do it. Um, the arts, I'm not a big art guy, so uh, I didn't go into that. Um, math, uh, I'm, I would say I'm decent at math. I'm not amazing. So I decided to do the one year SL. Um, I believe it's AASL, um, the one that you can go into HL, chose not to, um, but rather did AP Calc for my senior year. Um, for sciences, um, I chose to do um, IB Sports Science. Um, I thought that was the most appealing for me. Um, I almost did the two year chemistry, uh, or sorry, the one year two hour chemistry HL, um, but I didn't, uh, I chose a different path, which would be in individuals and societies where I did, um, business as an HL, which isn't actually um, standard, um, but I was able to get that done with Mr. Lancaster, um, which was really nice because I'm a big business guy. I like to, um, that's probably the subject I'll study in college. So I was lucky to be able to do that and then also do um, history uh, SL. So I did history SL and business um, HL. Uh, language acquisition, I did HL for Spanish. Um, and uh, obviously I did English HL um, as that is the only option for the diploma. Great, thanks Alex. Um, Molly Ross, can you tell us your, your plan? Um, so obviously group one was English HL as that's our only choice. And um, group two, I did Spanish HL um, like Alex because um, I enjoy Spanish. Um, individuals and societies is what I doubled up in because I wasn't interested in the arts. And I did psychology HL with Lancaster, which I love. And um, I also did um, IB Business SL, um, which I'm taking this year. Um, and I chose that over taking a history course. Um, for the sciences, I chose to take um, Abby Sports Science, um, since I want to go into kinesiology. And then for math, I did um, IB SL math, because um, I'm not a genius in math, so. <laughs> Thanks, Molly. Molly Longman. So for me, group one, again, was the English HL, like everyone else. Um, group two, I decided to take Spanish as an HL. I figured I had done it for so many years. I might as well finish and go all the way. Um, group three, I took, I'm taking psychology as an SL this year. I wasn't really interested in going the history route either. So I'm glad we have psychology. Group four, that's what I decided to double up in. I took IB sports science last year. And then this year I'm in the two hour I become class, which is really fun. I'm really sad we can't get into do labs as much because that's what I was definitely most excited for. But Mr. Taylor is definitely a great teacher and is still making it fun. And then for math, I took IB math SL last year. And then this year I'm in AP calculus, so. Perfect, thank you. So, so let's take a look at those options during the junior year and hopefully it'll make a little bit of sense when we look at what those, those options are uh, going forward now that we see that we've broken it down into those six groups. So if we decide to go the IB route, 
Okay. Obviously, we would take the first year of IB English A literature, and it says HL1 because it's the first year of a two-year course. If students are not pursuing the diploma and English is not their thing, obviously any student can just take English 11. Uh, and so those are the options. And if you notice that everything that was honors in the freshman and sophomore year now has become an IB course in the junior and the senior year. And we see all of the IB options up here. Uh, in group two, we have IB French 4 and IB, French, IB Spanish 4. Those both say SL next to them because it gives students the option to take it as an SL course or continue and take it as an HL course the following year. Okay? Group three is individuals and societies. Many, many, many of our students, uh, whether they are just taking a history course or whether they're doing the diploma, decide to take IB 20th century world history because they have to have a world history class during the junior year to graduate from Port of Central High School. And so there are other world history options if the IB route is not their path in that. Um, but many of our juniors end up pursuing that. As you heard from, from some of the diploma candidates, there were other group three options that they did. Alex did business. Uh, both of the Mollies did psychology, and so those are other group three options that are available in, in that IB route during uh, the junior or the senior year. Uh, group four, up here you'll notice we see IB bio and IB physics. You don't see IB chem because IB chem is only taught during the senior year, okay? And we see IB sports science. Notice that IB Bio and IB Physics have an HL next to them. They're only offered as HL courses. It is the first year of a two-year course. IB Sports Science has an SL next to it. It's a standard level course taught in one year. That could be taken during the junior year. It could be taken during the senior year. It's a one-year course, so it could go in either of those years. IB Math, uh, by the time uh, if, if students are taking Algebra 2 during the uh, June or during the sophomore year, many of them are ready to take uh, an IB Math, IB Math AASL, or IB Math AI. Remember, we said AA is more calculus based, AI is more statistics based, or if they don't want to go that IB uh, route, there are other math options, or if they're not quite ready for that IB Math class, that other math class would, would fit here, and then they could take the IB Math courses as as a senior as well. And then that group six is, we see IB art, IB theater, IB music, or the option to double up in the areas. And all three of these, these students tended to double up either in, in group three or group four, I think. Molly Ross and Alex doubled up in group three, and, and Molly doubled up, Molly Longman doubled up in, in group four doing uh, sports science and IB chem. Then that last hour, we see the first semester of, of the junior year, we have electives. Now remember, if, if uh, we don't take an art class, that opens up that sixth hour to take other classes that we need for graduation. The second semester of uh, the junior year, we start a class that is exclusively for diploma candidates. We'll talk a little bit more in detail about what that is, but it says TOK. It stands for Theory of Knowledge. It is a diploma-only class, so all of those kids get together and are cohorted together into uh, one or two classes, depending upon the size of, of the group. Um, and we'll talk a little bit uh, down the road what, what TOK is and kind of what TOK does because it really wraps all of these other courses and things they're learning in many of these other courses together into one course that's designed just for our diploma kids. Okay? So let's again look to our senior year and there's a couple things I'll point out here. Okay? Group one, we have to finish English and whether that's if, if they're diploma kids, they're obviously going to do English A lit HL, it's that we have to have four years of English, or if they're not doing the IB route, they can just do English 12. Uh, notice in group two, it says we offer IB French five, we offer IB Spanish five, and what next to that it says, or none. And the reason that it says or none is because it's possible that students decide that they're going to take their language course as an SL and they complete that during the junior year. That would mean that that hour then becomes open because they've already satisfied the requirement for that group, okay? Same thing occurs here with history or our group threes, right? If students take IB 20th, 
which is an SL course during the junior year, and they decide that's going to be my, my course that I test in, and they test as a junior, they have the option of continuing in history as an HL, the history of the Americas as an HL, or they have these other IB options that we talked about, IB business, IB psychology, or none, because if they already took the history SL as a sophomore, they've satisfied the requirements of group three. And that's why we see that um, the or none next to these, right? Group four, uh, we offer IB bio as an HL, IB physics as an HL, IB chem as an HL. All of those three major sciences are offered only as HL courses. We don't offer those three courses, bio, chem, or physics, as SL courses. They're only offered at Portage Central High School as an HL. Then the other two science courses that we offer that are one-year SL courses are IB sports science and IB ESS, which is IB environmental systems. Those are both one-year courses. And then uh, some students continue in math at the IB level. Either they start math during their senior year for, for IB, or they've already completed it during the junior year, which would then open up that for another class. So a lot of our students end up taking uh, math AASL, okay? And then they go on and say, now I have a math, this course open, and they can take AP Calculus, or they can take AP Stats as a senior. And that's a very, very common occurrence in many of our students uh, if they decide that they don't want to continue on and take the math AAHL course that we offer. Uh, group six is still available if, if students still need that, that group six option, or this is an hour that they can uh, double up in another one of those areas. Now, what you'll also notice at the bottom too, that seventh hour, the first semester of that is, is dedicated to TOK. So TOK is taught in the second semester of the junior year and first semester of the senior year. So it's taught over the span of two years. And that's when students are working on things like uh, the extended essay, which is something that we'll, we'll talk about in a minute. And then of course, after TOK is finished, that opens up another hour. The other, the, the thing that I wanna mention about this um, and I think it's really, really important to mention and why I put things like or none or none or elective here is because I think sometimes there's a misconception that IB students will only be taking IB courses. That's the only thing. They're never going to have a chance to take anything else that they want to take or they can't do sports. They're so focused on this. And I'm looking at all three of these individuals that are with us and every single one of those students is an athlete. And, and so uh, there's a misconception that the, the schedule is so full of all IB that they can't take things that they are interested in or they're so full uh, and, and, and stressed from homework that they can't do any extracurriculars or things outside of school. And every single one of these students has participated in at least a sport, and they're doing many uh, clubs, activities, et cetera, right? So Alex, can you just tell us like sports-wise, some of the other maybe elective classes that you took in outside of maybe some of the IB things? Yeah, so um, I've played soccer all four years, um, uh, doing varsity my junior and senior year. Um, so obviously that was uh, pretty time consuming with, um, but I was also able to manage that with uh, the Ivy Diploma. And um, besides that, I've done a few clubs. I'm in NHS um, and I also um, do DECA. I've done DECA all four years, which is um, a business competition uh, club at the school. Um, I think it's one of our best clubs. I'm also the president of that this year, co-president. Um, so uh, besides the Ivy Diploma, I think um, you can definitely do other things. and. Um, Really, if anything, you just learn how to manage your time better um, and be efficient at doing all these things. Hundred uh, percent, Molly Ross. What do you, what do you what do you participate in? Um, I've been a varsity volleyball player for four years, and I've played varsity tennis uh, for three now. Um, I've also been involved. I'm involved in NHS as well, and I run Little Dresses for Africa, and I've been involved in many other clubs. Um, that are through NHS. So it's definitely um, manageable with doing the IB diploma to be involved in other things. And I think it definitely is a tool that um, 
will teach you how to manage your time. So. Hundred percent, Molly. So I've been a swimmer all four years. I played water polo my sophomore year, junior year. Um, I also had a job last year at American Eagle. I worked about like 20, 24 hours a week. Still was able to complete all the things. So I'm also in NHS, a few different clubs as well. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's important to hear from the students that they're not only successful in school and doing a rigorous curriculum, but they also have time to do extracurriculars, to be involved and, and, and to, to be in clubs and all of those things, right? Uh, one additional component that I wanna talk about, um, or one part that I need to talk about is, if someone decides that they want to pursue the full diploma, there are three additional components that come with pursuing the diploma. Uh, the first one is called creativity, activity, and service, and we call that CAS. And so really in, in, in our world, what IB wants is IB does not just want your students to just sit behind a book and study all day long. They want them to be well-rounded students. They want them to be active. They want them to volunteer. They want them to be involved in clubs. And so, uh, what CAS is over the course of two years, students have to participate in things that will get them hours in these particular areas. And they need creative hours, they need activity hours, they need service hours. And what you'll notice is many of these, these, these students here said, I'm a part of NHS or National Honor Society. And, and the, the things that they do to satisfy the requirements of National Honor Society will also many times satisfy the requirements of CAS for the diploma. Can you guys just tell me a couple of the things that you guys used and did for, for CAS? Alex, what did you do? Um, for CAS, uh, like I said, Deco is a club that I um, did and that counted for the um, creativity hours uh, for activity, um, the sports, so soccer for um, club and uh, high school soccer, that counted for activity and service. Um, I pretty much got all of that through uh, my NHS um, volunteering. Uh, and I think um, it really, like, yeah, like you said, if you're in NHS um, and you just are active in the community, you're going to probably satisfy these without even, like, having to think about it. Yeah. Uh, Molly Ross, what, what were some of the things you did for CAS? Um, for active, I did volleyball and tennis as the active hours. And then for service, I got most of those through doing um, NHS activities. And for creative, I um, run Little Dresses for Africa. So I got most of my hours through that. What were some of the service things that you did? Um, I do Little Kids in Science. I have volunteered at the ASPCA. I've also volunteered like downtown Kalamazoo at the women's shelter and um, also other things, so. And Molly, what, what are the things that you've done in, in use for CAS? Um, so for my creative hours, I led my youth group worship band for two years. So I was planning sets, I was leading some people in music, so that was a lot of my creative hours. I also am a part of the Bronson Tie Blanket Club where we make tie blankets for kids at Bronson Hospital. So that's something I use for creative hours. Um, active hours, all my swim practices, meets, water polo training and games um, were my active hours. And then service, again, a lot from NHS. But outside of school, I'm a part of this first day shoe fund youth board. So. Um, the First Day Shoe Fund basically donates new shoes to kids in the Portage School Districts, uh, Kalamazoo, Madawan, Comstock. Um, so I've held a few different new shoe drives for them, done a few different days volunteering and helping them out. So Great. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Albertus, I've been dominating this, this chat. You want to talk about the extended essay? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, and first off, I really, I, I know I already said it one time before, but again, I'm so grateful to have Alex and Molly and Molly here because you are really, number one, you're seeing some amazing students we have here. And these are our IB diploma students who do all kinds of things outside the classroom successfully. And one of those things is an extended essay. Um, one of the things we'll talk about here in a little bit about why we started the IB program um, was really the focus on getting our kids prepared so that wherever they go from here, that they will be successful. That is one of the coolest parts of my job is to know if our kids do this sort of work, they will be just fine wherever they go from here. And part of that is an extended essay. The extended essay is something they work on. They start working on um, really the uh, spring of their junior year and into the summer and um, wrapping it up in the fall of their senior year. And this is an independent research project where they choose their own topics. Uh, we pair them up with a, uh, an advisor, often a colleague advisor here at Port Central High School to help them through the process of doing their own individual research, pulling it together, doing the analysis and the final product of that. Um, exactly the kind of work that they will do at whatever college or university where they're, that they're at. I don't know about you folks, the other parents who are out there, 78 parents who are out there uh, in this meeting. I don't know how you felt the first time you had to do your own individual research project in college. I was intimidated out of my mind. Um, and the fact of the matter is our kids are not because they've done it. That is the extended essay. And it's a res uh, something that all of our IB diploma students do here with our hope as, help as colleagues and with your help as moms and dads, a really important part of the program. Can we just ask the three of them what their extended essay was in? Yeah, I can start. Um, so mine was in business management uh, as the topic, and I did um, uh, sort of an exploration on Amazon's strategy for um, current external factors. Um, so basically just examining their business model um, for just current factors in uh, the world and country. Interesting. Uh, Molly Ross? Uh, I did mine in psychology, and my research question was, is there predisposition for PTSD to certain people? And yeah. And Molly Longman? I did mine in sports science. Um, <laughs> so basically, mine was more in sports psychology. I actually made my own um, personality test, and I sent it to football players and cross-country runners. And I basically compared how they're different, like how their motivations are different in their sports. So I was testing the difference between a team sport and an individual sport. Um, so, yeah. That's great. Thank you, guys. Um, I, I think for me, what the feedback that we're getting from universities about how well our students are prepared coming in to be able to write research is what makes the extended essay so important. Um, yes, I think looking at that and saying 4,000 words, it can be a little daunting, um, but I think they would probably all admit that the research and the prep and the plan is probably a little bit more intense than the actually writing. Once you get everything set, the writing is probably the easy part of it. Um, uh, but, but I think by in the end, they're probably also uh, very happy and pleased with the efforts that they put into that. And when they go to college, the types of, of, of research that they'll do at the next level, uh, I think for them is going to be a breeze because of, of the work that, they, that they've already done. Uh, the last component, and we've, we've addressed this slightly, is, is that class TOK, and this is a class just for diploma students. Um, and it, it's comprised almost entirely of, of questions, and, and the most central of these is, is the idea of how do we know? How do we know that this causes this? How is this learned? How is this understood? How is this influenced culturally? And so also TOK kind of uh, attempts to wrap many of the ideas, concepts, theories that we learn in many of our other classes, our other IB classes, uh, and mesh them all together into one course that's designed specifically just for diploma kids. And that's also the course where um, a bulk of their work and, and prep for the extended essay is done. Uh, those are the additional components 
of the diploma if students choose to do the full IB diploma, which is the six IB courses over the junior and senior year. They then also have to participate in CAS. They also have to do the extended essay and they also have to take TOK. Okay. So that's the what is it part of this. <laughs> and, and so the last part of this before we, we field some questions is really the conversations that I have with my son is the like the whys, right? Why are, why are we doing this? What's the motivation behind this? Uh, we have a lot of students that, that take honors classes and this is the logical projection for them. Uh, but again, a lot of times we want to see with all this work that I'm doing, what is the benefit at the end? What, what are we going to take away from this? And, and one of those is we're trying to prepare our kids to give them the, the best possible uh, chance to, to do whatever they want to do in their lives, whether that's, that's college, whether that's trades, whether that um, is universities, whether it's grad school, med school, whatever those are, uh, we want to put them in the best position to attain all of their goals. And one of the things is many of them have ambitions to go to, to schools. We have, we have a, a lot of choices. And the other part of this is, is it's becoming harder and harder to get into some of these, these good schools. And so we're looking for ways to distinguish us from, from others. And, and one of those things is, is pursuing the diploma. And, and we're seeing that from universities. And these are IB students acceptance rates versus the total population acceptance rates. And there are some good schools here. We have Brown, we have Stanford, Columbia, Harvard, NYU, University of Michigan. Um, and then there, there's even more. And I'm just trying to, to sort of take all of your time, but just give you an idea. All of them have an increase in acceptance rates for students that are pursuing the full diploma. And on average, what we see is that uh, the average acceptance rate for schools for students who are pursuing the IB diploma is 22% higher than that of the total population. And it's a little bit lower for those Ivy League schools, which, which have some really, really strict requirements. That's one of the benefits. We want to, of course, put ourselves in a position to be able to get into the schools that we want to get into, and, and, and IB is an assistance to, to get into those. I think another part of this, especially for me, and this isn't a, as visible early on, but it's later, is that our IB students are completing their undergraduate degrees at a higher rate than their peers, often in less time. And, and, and so, Number one, it's because they're successful from the get-go. And, and Mr. Albertus alluded to this, is, is it is so great to have our IB kids come back and say, my first year of college was like a review. I was so prepared for school because some students that don't do this sort of curriculum go to college and it's like, oh my gosh, this is hard, right? Our kids are used to that rigor. Our kids are used to that work. It's a stepping stone to college. And for me, in thinking about my son who, who's going to pursue that, for me, that's what I want for him. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, and if I could just add that as a dad. Um, I mean, um, my oldest son and daughter both did the Ivy Diploma. Um, were there times where the two of them as well as the two awesome Ollies and Alex that gnashed their teeth during their junior or senior year, working through really hard things, uh, doing the IB diploma. Absolutely. Every single person does the IB diploma. The question is, is what, it's not whether our students do hard things. It's when do they do hard things? Um, if we can, with the IB diploma, help them and support them with this sort of college level program in the junior and senior year, while they're home with us as moms and dads, giving them the support, giving them the strength, giving them the things that they need um, so that they're ready to do this and be successful. Much better than they do this at home with us as moms and dads, where we can give them support than when they're out on their own, their freshman, sophomore year of college, when they don't have the support systems underneath them. Um, that is, uh, I, when we first started this, there are so many wonderful things about the IB program, to be clear. Um, but as a mom and dad, that's what I felt first and foremost. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I couldn't let this night go by without communicating with you. So thanks for letting me interrupt, Eric. Yeah, thank you. 
Um, and, and then just on top of that, we, we've had many of our students come back and say, um, I'm involved in clubs at college. I'm involved in doing community service. I started an organization. I'm assisting faculty in research because I've done this intensive research before. They're getting internships. They're, they're getting study abroad um, opportunities. Or they can do those things because they've already received credits towards college. And so it gives them an opportunity to take a semester and go abroad. Um, and so for me, the college readiness thing is such a big piece of this. To, to have our kids say to us, I felt so prepared for the next level. And that, that's really our jobs. And, and, and to hear that from our kids is, for me, the most rewarding part of this. Uh, I think for, for parents as well, um, I'm going to jump forward a little bit. Uh, one other additional piece that, that you look at is when the students take these assessments at the end of their courses, many of these assessments have the ability to get them college credit. And, and so I'm just going to use my alma mater as an example. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Michigan. And so when we look at some of the credits that are given for passing some of these assessments, uh, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty encouraging. So we look at some of our HL science courses passing with a score of four. IB is scored out of seven. And so passing with a score of, of four, uh, students would receive 10 credits for physics. And I, if we put that into perspective, I graduated from the University of Michigan. I think I needed a, about 120 credits to graduate. Um, 10 credits is a massive amount. That means that they are viewing that physics course as two college courses in physics. Uh, my my uh, IB psychology course, the HL psychology course with passing with a five, Michigan would give eight credits. They're viewing that as two college psychology courses. Most courses in college are three to four credits. Uh, and so we have students that are leaving Port of Central High School with 20, 30, sometimes even more uh, college credits. And we see that with with the University of Michigan, we can see uh, this with Miss Salisbury's alma mater, uh, Michigan State, uh, same sort of thing. Uh, and you see the same thing with Western. I just want to give you the idea that our students are leaving school uh, with credits. It's great. Number one, it saves money. It affords us opportunities. For me, it was it was awesome at U of M. Um, I, I played water polo at U of M. My season was in the fall. That allowed me to actually take a little bit less credits in the fall when I was playing and traveling. And it also allowed me to have a job and, and not feel completely overwhelmed by having some credits already going in, into school. And these students uh, potentially can have up to 30 credits, and if we put that into perspective, uh, it, it's like a, a year done. Um, I got a really fabulous email from, from a mother two days ago, and um, it, it was just thanking me about the program and, and where her daughter was at, and she's going to Bowling Green, and she's successful, and she's already a, soft, uh, she's already a sophomore, and uh, she got a, a new job and got a raise, and, and it was just so pleased with all of the opportunities that she was afforded by, by doing the diploma. Um, and like Mr. Alberta says, there are times in all three of these students would attest to it, it's hard. It's difficult, it's rigorous, there's gonna be times that they're stressed, but just like anything in our lives, uh, there's always going to be something that's, that's stressful and it's hard. And it's how we tackle that, it's how we approach it, and what we learn from that um, and, and so I would rather students not have the regret of not doing it because maybe it's a challenge or it's hard and, and, and give it a go and, and, and give it a try and, and, and see how it goes. Um, those are my, my big whys. So if we started out with what is it <laughs> and we kind of ended with, you know, what, what are the benefits? What, what is the takeaway? And, and sometimes like for these students, it's all the work right now Hopefully, you know, in a few months down the road, they're going to see they're going to see the whys and, and all of that work that they put into. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be happy and they get to go to graduation and, and they get to to wear this this big metal probably and and whatnot. And they love that because it's gigantic um, and and they're proud of themselves and whatnot. And so 
Um, I'd love to work with your sons and your daughters. Uh, we have fabulous colleagues here. We have great teachers. Uh, they're really uh, the ones who put the time, effort, dedication into this program, and they, they do really a fantastic job. Great colleagues. Uh, anything else that you want to add, Mr. Albertus, before we kind of tackle questions? Absolutely not. Um, you hit, the, hit all the, the important parts of that. And again, Molly and Molly and Alex, thanks for being here. Um, and like Eric talked about, this is really the opportunity for us to be able to respond to you guys, to give you the question and answers that you need. Um, to be clear, for all of you as moms and dads out there, um, you, like I said, we're here as long as you're here to ask questions. Don't. So if you feel like you need to leave, that's no problem. Feel free. Um, Tam, I know, has already been collecting questions in the back channel. And so I was really hoping to ask Tamla to see if she could throw some questions that you guys had out to all of us. And, uh, and hopefully Molly and I and Molly and Alex and we, can, we can all do a good job getting you the information you need. All right. Um, I just didn't have an opportunity to, to really like pitch in about the IB program. But uh, as Eric mentioned, I was a teacher in the IB program for a long time. And it's absolutely fabulous. It's awesome to be able to see students work through those challenges that they're that they're talking about. Um, and it can be tough, but man, to see their smile on the other side. I work with extended essay candidates still um, in our IB program. And I was just talking with a couple of them last week because they're wrapping up their process and they're proud. Um, they know it was hard. They, they learned a lot of independence and time management and, and skill, but they are going to be so well prepared, just like Eric and Eric have already said. So I just wanted to put in my two cents for that. And we're going to start with easy questions, ones that have been um, already answered, but in the presentation, but just a repeat, just to make sure everybody's clear. And the first one is, can a student not taking honors courses also pursue IB courses um, or the diploma? And that one, that one's an easy answer. The answer is yes. Eric? Yeah, that's a hundred percent yes. There is not a single prerequisite class to to pursue the diploma. And actually, we've had students that have that have taken not a single honors course as freshman or sophomore that decide they want to challenge themselves uh, in their junior year and pursue the diploma. And so, no, we do not have. There are a lot of schools in even the United States and around the world that have admissions processes to get in and there are strict requirements to get in to their IB program. We allow any student that wants to pursue the diploma or take IB courses the opportunity to do so. Yeah, and if I could jump a little more to it, Eric is absolutely right. The reality is, is most IB schools are not like Port of Central High School. Most IB schools are private schools or their county magnet schools where you apply to get them in. We made the decision from the very beginning that kids and families are going to decide on whether they're going to get involved and to what extent. Um, and we thought by doing that, by opening it to everybody, that maybe our test scores would be lower than like world averages or other schools. Not the case. Not at all the case. Our kids continue to do amazing work um, because they own their decisions. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Tim and Eric. All right, another um, one that's easy. Is the recording gonna be available for future viewing? And we're recording it, so I would think yes is the answer. Yeah, we, I answered it for us. Yes, yeah. we'll make sure that it gets posted. We'll get it posted. And, and then what I also did is I, I also attached the, the slides presentation that we just did now into the chat. So if anyone wanted to to pull that up, they could do that as well. This is this an abridged version of this is also on our, our school's website under the, the IB tab. Yep. And I'll get a link, both of these from Eric, um, and I'll drop them into Thursdays or our weekly Mustang Minutes for this week too. So everyone will get a chance to have that. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, great question. Okay, the next couple of questions, I'm going to try to, again, go with the ones that are, have shorter answers here. But um, just to repeat, if you're not pursuing the IB diploma, you cannot take theory of knowledge. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. And then um, another one, what's the difference between SL and HL again? SL is, is taught over one year. HL is taught over two years. The only exception we have, like we talked about before, is the IB Chem, which is taught in a two-hour block only during the senior year. 
And really, I think that was originally done because a lot of the labs that we're doing were, were not able to be finished in uh, a 50 minute class period and they were they were taking too long. So um, the theory behind it was if we had a two hour block, a lot of those those labs that students were doing would be able to be completed during that time. And so it, it made sense at the time to to have it be uh, a two hour block. It's the same amount of seat time, right? Um, but it's taught only only one year. All every other HL that we offer is a two year course. SLs one year. Thank you. And kind of on along that same line. Um, so when you're talking about SL versus HL and college credits, um, is it only the HL classes that can earn a student college credit? Can you talk? I know that was a big one for students who were taking IB history, and it's always a big question. Yeah. Um, here is my statement about this. Um, in the past, the vast majority of classes, IB classes that were getting college credit were HL courses. That's beginning to change at some universities. So my advice to anybody would be go to the university's website, look to see what they offer for either AP or IB classes, depending upon which ones you're taking here, to see what you're going to get credit for. Um, you know, there have been some colleges that are now offering some credits for SL courses. Oakland has pursued giving credit for SLs. Notre Dame, Purdue are, are some of the other schools that started to give credit for SL courses. But there's still a lot that are only offering credit for the HL courses. So my advice, of course, is, is check with each individual school because each individual school is different. Thanks. Now getting into some more specifics about the SL courses and the HL courses, we had a couple of questions about bio and history. The question about bio was um, the parent thought that they had seen an option for a biology SL in a worksheet or some sort of scheduling form so somewhere. Um, did that used to be a course and now we don't only offer it HL or just making sure that we heard you correctly that biology is only offered HL at this time. So our, our big three in the science courses, bio, chem, and physics are only offered at the HL level. You are correct. Thank you. And then what about IB history? So if I'm taking 11th and 12th grade IB history, that would count as an HL and I can go ahead and say yes <laughs> to that one. Um, and then is it possible for me to only take history SL? And Eric, do you want to clarify a little bit between people who are pursuing the diploma? I'm just speaking as somebody who taught history and that was a huge question for the students in the course. Like what happens, do I have to take the second year of the course if I enroll in SL? Like do I have to go on to HL? Can you explain that a little bit more please? No, absolutely, we do not have to continue into HL if we take the, the first year. Um, there's a couple of those courses that are like that. So English we only offer as an HL, you have to take both years. Bio, Chem, Physics are HLs, you have to take those both years. There are some that build on each other, so our math class, our AASL, students can choose to take that as an HL as well. History is the same way. We could take IB 20th century world history as an SL, and if we love history, we can continue and take IB history of the Americas as an HL. Um, psychology is another one of those where uh, I can do the first year, the, which is actually a combined IB slash AP course, and then if I really love psych, I can continue and take psych as an HL. Um, and so w in terms of history, no, you do not have to continue. If we are a course candidate though, that means I'm not doing the full IB diploma and I'm just taking some courses. I would make sure that you look at the colleges that offer credit before you decide to sign up to take that assessment. We've had a lot of people sign up to take like the history SL assessment that are not going towards the diploma and they take that, that test, but then they don't get credit for it because schools aren't giving credit for an SL test. And so, I always ask the, the history teachers to have that conversation with their students um, and all of our teachers about um, 
if they're a course candidate or if they are a diploma candidate in which courses are going to be able to get them credit and if they want to test in those or not. I hope that I answered that question appropriately. Thank you. Um, next question is about the difference between the AA and the AI math. Can you clarify and explain that just a little bit more? We actually have two questions about that, so I'll let you answer that one. How does a student decide between taking IB Math AA or Math AI as the first part of the question? Um, I, I would say if, if the students are relatively uh, good at math, the AA is the most most frequently taken or participated in course that, that we offer because it also offers the opportunity to take math at the HL level. The math AI is more statistics based and that course uh, I think we're only offering one section of that course where we offer many sections of the AASL. Um, and so if, if a student is pursuing something like engineering, the healthcare field, medicine, those types of things, the AA is probably the route that they're going to want to go because most of those types of occupations and things are, are uh, um, I would say things that they're going to take in college would require a calculus class. And so they would want that knowledge that they're getting in AA because they're going to use it at the next level. Thank you. The next question, again, is about the math AA. Um, and the parent says that their understanding is AA math includes calculus. Is there a benefit to taking AP Calc after IBAA math or doubling up on that calculus? Uh, well, I, I think that the, the AP Calc is going to also go into a little bit more depth. It's going to hone some of those skills that they're going to continue on. In. And just to, to recap, that also might be those students want to get the college credit in that, that math course, right? Um, and so because they took it, many kids are taking the IB course as, as an SL, right? They're not, they potentially might not get the college credit but they may be able to get some credit by taking AP Calc the senior year. And so I think that's a lot of the, the motivation behind students who do the IB math during the junior year and then do a, either AP Calc or AP Stats as a senior year because then they can get some college credit in a math subject because they used the math as an SL during the junior year to satisfy the requirements of the diploma, which wouldn't give them college credit at the SL level. And I can add, because I did that, um, and I'm in AP Calculus right now, um, I would say uh, for the first like two chapters of AP Calc, it was kind of review from the year before. But IB Math AA, SL is not all calculus, it's some pre-calculus, trigonometry, and calculus, a little bit of statistics, not a lot, but it's more of a like rounded up sort of math class where AP Calculus is obviously just calculus, but there were definitely some things that were reviewed for me earlier this year from last year. Yeah, thanks Molly. That's good insight from somebody who took it. Agree. Um, the next question, I'm going to go backwards a little bit just because we might have people dropping off of the call and more people might have this question, but um, there's a question in there about taking HL assessments in the junior year. So just do you want to clarify that again, like the two-year program HL and like how the assessments work? Yeah, absolutely. It's really a program that starts in the junior year and culminates in the senior year. And, and that's really how we want to approach um, our program. Uh, IB requires that all HL, HL assessments have to be taken the same year. And because of that, and because of the, the nature of how English and other things match up, a, 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 kid, a student could not take, let's say, a, if they were advanced in a language, they couldn't take the HL course, well, they couldn't take the HL course as a junior and test, and then go and take English and test in, in English as during the senior year because IB says all HL courses have to be tested the same year. Does that make sense? 
It does to me. And if it doesn't make sense to you, add a clarifying question in our back channel and we will try again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, more course-based questions. Some of these are very individualized to the family, which is awesome. Um, so I'm gonna skip over those really specific ones and then get more into ones that might apply to many more people. Um, the questions like, what are some of the classes that are offered for IB arts? And can you also go into IB music? Because we've got arts and music questions in here. And if you can list a few of those IB arts options, that would be awesome. Yeah, so there's there's really three options in that group six. We offer IB art here. Uh, we offer IB music that's taught at Northern, and then we offer IB theater, but we have not run IB theater in a number of years, and that's really just based on, on numbers and interest. Uh, but those are really the three that are in our programs of studies that that we offer in group six: IB art, IB music, IB theater. Thank you. I'm just skipping around here. Um, is it possible then? What's Eric, that? Feel free to jump in on any of this if you if you have things that you want to add to this. Um, is there kind of going along with the arts and band? Um, we had a couple of questions about band specifically. Is it possible for students to do band if they are in the IB diploma program? Um, and then, generally speaking. Um, what happens if there's a scheduling conflict uh, with a program that a student wants to be involved in and the IB diploma program? Absolutely, and this is something I think that I hopefully can be more helpful with. Um, one of the things that we make a commitment to our kids is just like Molly and Molly and Alex, when they said, we wanna be IB diploma students, we're making a commitment to them. And part of that commitment is to work out the master schedule so that they get the classes they need to complete the IB diploma. Um, and along with that, we have always valued our students and our families having choice within that. Again, like I said, most IB schools are not like Port Central High School. Most IB schools, everyone takes the same HLs, everyone takes the same SLs. That's how it normally is organized. We don't. We want to make custom-made schedules for each of our folks who are doing the IB diploma. Um, and overall, we've been really, really blessed and really successful that we've been able to pull that off. So what we try to do is we ask our seniors, our juniors and seniors, what are the classes they want to do the IB diploma? And we try to ask them what is like one other elective too. And as Eric pointed out, you can see how electives fit into an IB diploma student schedule. But we also would like to get that information so that we can also try to work and build the master schedule so that it reflects the needs of all of our IB diploma students. Um, and obviously band is part of it. So we work really hard to make it so that IV classes in general don't conflict with band. Because as you can imagine, our marching band, Fifth Hour, has about 170 kids in it. Um, that's a lot of kids to be able to work around the master schedule. Now to be clear, that does not mean that we always get it perfectly right. We don't. Um, I fail at times as far as building the IV schedule where we have conflicts between two particular classes. In those cases, um, we do what we always do, is be honest about it, sit down and talk with our, our students, um, look at the options to figure out where we go from there. So for example, um, many times over the past many years, we've had Northern students who came over here to take like Tama's IB 20th century world history. We have had our kids go over to Portage Northern to take like IB Spanish 4, just as examples. Um, and that's helpful too. The fact that we have two high schools in the same community, both doing IB, makes it possible to wake, work out some of those quirkier scheduling things. But by and large, when we have in a typical year, 40 to 50 uh, some odd juniors and 40 to 50 some odd seniors, it's rare. It's typically like three, four, maybe five I diploma kids that we have quirks with their schedule that we have to kind of do something special like that. So overall, we've been, we've been fortunate to have a good deal of success in that area. That's a great question. Yeah, and we currently have students that are in the senior year of the diploma that have done marching band every single year. Yep, every year. Thank you guys. Um, there are actually some more questions about how those um, crosstown courses work. Um, we already answered the question about taking Latin. Um, yes, we've had Latin. Uh, we've had some of our PC students taking Latin at um, Northern. And then another question 
regarding Northern, I think had to do with the IB music. So again, that's a course that's offered at Northern. Isn't that what you said? Only Northern, Eric? You want to take that, Eric? Yeah, Josh Bartz is a terrific guy and happens to be a music teacher over at Portage Northern High School. And over the years, probably not every year over the last five years, but probably three, probably, maybe four of the past five years, they've had enough students to do IB music. Um, and so again, like those, like so many classes here, um, we do need enough students to sign up for them in order for us to be able to offer that particular class. Um, but definitely, classes in Northern and Central are available to each other um, based on how many students we have signed up. Yeah, I, cur I currently have three Portage Northern students in my higher level psychology course right now. Mm -hmm. um, another question, again, about kind of our program at Portage Central and how it jives um, with Northern's program. There's a question about TOK. Is that policy to only allow that course for IB diploma students our building policy? Is that district policy? Does Northern do the same thing? That's a question our parents are asking. Yeah, it's a great question. Can I jump into that one, Eric? Mm -hmm. um, actually, um, Northern having only IB diploma students in TOK predated us. Um, that's something that they have done very much since the beginning. Um, and I get it. I understand that uh, uh, TOK also becomes a support system for IB diploma kids, where when there are rough days and they need to gnash their teeth, it's good to be able to be together and gnash your teeth and, and to commiserate. Um, and it's also good to be supportive of each other. Um, um, the, the big difference is that so much of what happens um, as an IB diploma student happens in TOK. The extended essay, a lot of discussion goes into the extended essay. Um, the uh, uh, CAS uh, opportunities, that's a big discussion in the item of that. So I wouldn't want to say never would we ever allow a non IB diploma student to take TOK. Um, that wouldn't, that, that seems to be a wrong thing to say. At the same time, um, we need to be crystal clear to anyone who's taking that class that all the components of that class um, are necessary. And, and that's all those components to be an IB diploma student. So frankly, that's always a thing for me when I talk with our kids. When I talk with our kids who are taking one or two IB classes, awesome. If that's the right thing for them to balance off their schedules with KMC or EFE or EFA or all the other wonderful programs that we're fortunate to have in Kalamazoo County, great. But when, I, when Eric and I start talking with kids who are taking three and four IB classes, by the time you're doing that, all you're doing is adding TOK and you're an IB diploma student. That is not that big of a change, especially if a student's thinking about doing TOK, awesome. Um, then, then you're almost a diploma student because the extended essay and CAS is such an important part of that whole conversation. So I hope that distinction makes a little more sense now. Thanks, Eric. Um, since you brought it up and we've got a few questions about some of those other programs, um, if, if my student is a KMC student, can a student do both KMZ and the IB diploma? Um, that's the first part of the question. Does somebody want to take that? Yeah. OK. Can I take that one? First off, I, um, uh, we are really lucky since, I think, 1986 to have the Kalamazoo Area Math and Science Center um, right here in Kalamazoo County. Um, the only bad thing I can ever say about KMC is my good friend Michael Tanoff, who's a principal there, wears the ugliest socks known to man. Um, you can check yourself, and you'll notice they are horribly ugly socks. Um, and it's a wonderful program, um, and it's not an it's not an IB program. And I, the International Baccalaureate Organization, has certain expectations that we must follow, especially in terms of assessments and training of our teachers. That KMC doesn't participate in. It doesn't mean that KMC is not wonderful. They are, well, with the exception of the Sox. Um, but because they're not an IB program, they can't do students who do KMC can't do the full IB diploma. But that's okay. I mean, we have KMC students every year who take their KMC classes and then come here to take IB 20th Century World History and Spanish and French and English and all those other wonderful IB classes, and they make the program that's right for them. Um, to be clear, we're not here to tell you what to do. Um, our responsibility is make sure you know all the options that are available to you, the pros and cons, and so that you as a family can make the right decision for you and so that we uh, support you every step of the way. Um, but to answer a specific question, no, I'm afraid you can't do KMC and the full IB diploma. Or are you still muted, Tama? I'm sorry. 
Sorry, I didn't want to get static in there. Um, are we going to ever offer any IB courses online to make this a possibility? Um, well, I mean, unless a student is able to do three HLs and three SLs, um, uh, the, it, 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 it doesn't matter if they're online or not, they couldn't do the full IB diploma. That is to say, as soon as you start taking TMC classes and because they're not IB, um, you can't, you know, you can't do the IB diploma. Um, having said that, um, yeah, we have learned a lot about teaching our classes online. Hopefully you as moms and dads have received a survey here just in the last few days where folks um, here are just exploring what this new world has taught us. Um, and is there a possibility someday that IB classes might be taught online? Maybe. Um, but that, uh, that feedback that uh, we get from parent surveys will be incredibly, incredibly important. So if you haven't got a chance to respond to that survey yet, this is just my little plug. Thank you. Feedback. Okay, I'll stop. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what about, so I'm going to start going into some of the other programs people are asking about compatibility with here. So what about dual enrollment or like EFE, EFA, is, is IB compatible with those courses? And again, Eric kind of already mentioned it, but a student can participate in IB classes even if they're not pursuing the IB diploma. Does anybody want to? Um, jump in with yeah. some examples of other. Yeah, if, I can, if I can do that, yes, there have been students who have done the full IB diploma and have done EFE or EFA classes. Um, for example, my daughter um, did the EFA program um, her junior year and still had to work out her schedule to uh, finish up the IB diploma. Um, so over the years, we've had a number of students to do that. Having said that, it's hard. That is to say, not hard because of the work. Kids can handle the work. They're awesome. It's hard because of the scheduling. So like I said, when our kids do the IB diploma, we're making a commitment to them that we're going to work out our master schedule such that we're going to do everything we can to move heaven and earth to get them the classes they need. But as soon as you're doing an outside county program class that we have no control over, it is, we need luck. That is really what we need, that that luck of that outside EFE or EFA class or dual enrollment just happens to fit in the context of the rest of the IB classes. So sometimes it works out, um, but it's really, like I said, you need to do some good fortune on your side. Thank you. And then we do have some questions um, specifically about ATIP and um, the IB diploma program or just IB courses in general? Is there any overlap? Um, how does IB jive with ATIP? Yeah, I think I can do that. Again, ATIP, for those of you who are not familiar with, is Acad Academically Talented Youth Program, another program that's been around now for about 40 years in Kalamazoo County, um, and a wonderful program. Um, and, 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 and so, but to be clear though, IB and the APT tip don't really speak to each other. That is to say, um, the IB curriculum is a worldwide curriculum. Um, it's established by folks all over the world, um, particularly in England and Switzerland. Um, and so that overarching program that isn't really spoken to by the ATIP program. That doesn't mean that ATIP program is not a wonderful program. Of course it is. Um, but those things don't really overlap in any, in any meaningful way. Um, and, and keeping in mind that IB classes are classes that start in junior and senior year. Um, and so folks who do ATIP, like in middle school, just want to keep that in mind so they can pick the right classes for themselves when they're here during their four years of Port Central. Thank you. And actually, there are a couple other questions about ATIP that I'm going to shift down because I think they're specific to that program, not the IB program. And if I'm misinterpreting your question, go ahead and throw another question down at the bottom. Um, we have some other questions specifically about course sequencing in the freshman and sophomore year and how kind of like the roadmap that this, our students were talking about. Um, but if I am a student in um, like ninth and, and tenth grade, is there a particular, are there any courses that they should take in a particular group area that are more important than others? Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I just saw your text. You dropped in. Um, yes, um, like Eric and, and Tama said before, every year we have had uh, students take no honors classes in ninth and 10th grade, jump right into the IB diploma and had success. And that's wonderful. Having said that, 
We are always going to recommend that our students in freshman and sophomore year take as many honors classes as they can without crushing themselves because freshman year is a hard year with a lot of transitions. Um, to take the honors classes that you can because they will best prepare you for the level of work that you do in IB classes and the skills that you need to be successful in IB classes. Um, so really there's no one roadmap. Um, every, uh, each one of our sons and daughters is a little different from each other as far as those choices. But again, we're always going to encourage you to take um, the most rigorous course load possible because that will prepare our students the best. So for instance, if my student takes geometry in freshman year, are they ready for IB math in 11th grade? That is a great question and more I would probably I would probably appreciate the, the feedback from that math teacher more um, because I'd probably a normal place would be to go. Let's say I'm taking honors geometry in freshman year and then maybe I'm thinking about honors algebra two uh, sophomore year. Then there's a whole host of choices that our kids are able to do as far as junior and senior year. But again, that's a very, especially math. Math is among the more complicated stories because it really is specific to that particular student and his interests and what kind of things he or she may want to do after he or she leaves Port Central High School. All those figure in. So that conversation between the student and the moms and dads um, and that math teacher is really important. Two, um, if you have some other overarching questions like about math, um, I would suggest don't listen to anything that Eric Alberta tells you because I'm not the math guy. Martha Keeler, mkeeler at portageps.org. Martha Keeler is our um, math department chair and she knows the ins and outs of all those choices like nobody's business. So I'd always encourage you to talk to her if you have other questions. That. So Actually, can, I, can I jump in real quick? Because, sorry, Tama. Um, because Molly took a IB math class as, as a junior, it's taking AP Calc now. What did she do freshman and sophomore year to get to that IB math class during junior year? So freshman year, um, I took honors geometry with Mr. Halloran and then sophomore year I took honors algebra two. Um, and then junior year I was in IB math as well. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. I think that was the, the sequence that they were talking about with geometry freshman year, algebra two, sophomore year honors, and then um, by that time, then they're ready to take an IB math class by the time they're a junior. Okay, since you brought it up, you dropped Martha Keeler's uh, email address. Can you please drop an email address for who I would want to contact to learn more about IB Music at Northern? Would that be Rick or Josh? Well, I'd start with Josh Bartz, J Bartz. Um, Bartz is B-A-R-T-Z um, at PortagePS.org. Josh is a great gay guy. He's their band director, um, and, uh, and he would be very helpful as far as answering your questions. So thanks for asking that. No problem. I didn't ask it, but thanks to whoever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my son transferred to PPS in 10th grade, but had to take some of our ninth grade courses, um, like history, for example. Is he going to be able to get his schedule in a place where he's ready to get an IB diploma? Or is that going to be a problem for my son or daughter who transferred to Portage um, after high school began? Yeah. Great question. Transfers are more complicated because at the same time you're doing IB diploma, you're also having to meet that we're having to meet the, the expectations for the state of Michigan for our graduation requirements and Portage Public Schools, but they're mostly the same. Um, and so, but more often than not, we can find ways to work that around. So if, if, uh, if that person is still here listening, I would really appreciate if you drop me an email, Eric Albertus, so it's elbertus at portageps.org. Let me know when we can sit down um, and then we can talk through the schedule you have currently, talk through junior and senior year, because um, I would like to believe there's some way we can be creative to figure out a way to get there. Yeah, and I think there always would be, especially if it's one or two courses. You know, I mean, I think a lot of kids think I have to take IB History SL as a junior. We still have seniors that take IB History SL. So um, as long as we get to that point by the senior year, it's still possible. There's ways to work around that. All right, some of these um, questions I think we've kind of already touched on, but we'll go over them again. Um, if a student is taking an HL class, 
do they have to take their final exams in the junior year if we know that they're going to register for an HL exam in the senior year? And I already am feeling for those students because they're not going to, Megan, or not Megan, um, Alex and, and Molly can answer that one probably. So to be, yes, they, they will have to take the course exam. Yeah. The, the only exam that that a student is exempt from would be the spring exams if they are testing in that subject area, either AP or IB. The only exception is uh, AP Gov, they have to take the class exam because that class is only offered as a semester class. Thank you. And then, um, so if my student is only taking HL classes, then they would have to take all of their assessments in their senior year. We've already answered that one, I think. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, how can a student know if he or she is ready for an IB class before committing to it? Can they go back to the standard level of the class if honors is too fast? I'm gonna just follow up. I, that question was added very recently here. And if that person wants to add a little bit of clarification, I'm wondering just based on how the question is wording, if if they're thinking that honors means HL and standard, me, you know what I mean? Like the standard level of a course. Um, sure. So I'm not sure if that person can ask that question again, maybe it differently in the chat, we'll come back to that one. Um, uh, so another do you, do you oh. want to address like a schedule change in the in the oh, yeah. ninth and 10th grade year, maybe if like they start in honors and it's too difficult and they want to go back to regular, can you, you just want to address that in terms of that process? Yeah, you bet. I mean, yes, we do want our kids to, to like I said, take the most intense or rigorous course that they feel like they can handle. And if we can make a recommendation, we're always going to suggest that for kids to take a shot and take that honors level class, much easier to take that honors level class. And then the first two or three weeks go, whoa, this is more than I bargained for and step down to a level versus the opposite. Get into a, a non honors classes and then try to make the move to that because there's just so much catch up that that our daughter or son would have to do um, to make up for that. So, yeah, we really have that first two to three weeks. We like doing it in two weeks, sometimes go off as much as three weeks. And if something were really weird, we would talk. I mean, we don't want to rule out longer than three weeks, but those first two or three weeks are really important to kind of get a sense, take a temperature of the class, see how you're doing as far as the reading load um, to make sure you're in the right place. I'm going to follow that one up um, with another question that has come up just based on experience and related to the question that was just asked. So if I am, let's say I'm a junior and I've met with you, Mr. Lancaster, and we've planned out how we're going to earn the IB diploma and I get into IB 20th century world history and then I'm like, oh, I don't think I want to do history as my HL. Am I like out of luck in terms of the IB diploma? Like what happens if I have to change my path because my interests change? Is that a problem scheduling wise? We've changed a lot of people's paths along the over the years. And so there's a lot of times when somebody initially has a plan and that plan changes or interests change or career paths change. Um, and so, no, we're not, we're not dead set locked into a schedule when we start something the junior year. We've had a lot of people decide, hey, uh, I'm taking this psych class and I'm just, I'm taking it because I, I wanna learn something about it. But then all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, I love this. Now I wanna add it as an HL instead. And so we, we, we have the ability to, to modify those things. Obviously, some modification is possible. Revamping an entire plan gets a little bit difficult with availability and having to have certain numbers of HLs and SLs. So that's why we like to plan it during the, the sophomore year with those students, what those two years might look like. But it is po that's not set in stone. It is possible to, to change those things. Thanks. And that kind of gets along to this next question here. Like if I'm a student, when do I have to commit to the IB 
diploma. And if I decide I don't want to do the diploma anymore, like what are the consequences? Can I drop out of it? Are, it, are there any consequences to me as a student or a family? Do, do you want to take that, Eric, or do you want me to take that? You bet. I'm happy to. Mm -hmm. Right about now is when Eric, like for example, Eric visited with all of our, uh, for example, our Honors English 10 uh, kids to, to talk to them about the IB diploma and to say, hey, where, where are you leaning? Are you leaning toward doing it, leaning or not doing it? This is helpful to get from our sophomores right now to, so that we can make sure that as we head into the uh, uh, class selection process, that we can choose the right classes. We're thinking about all those things we talked about tonight, HLs, SLs, all those uh, pieces, um, so that we have all of our ducks in a row as we head into the junior year. And having said that, just like Eric said, every year as we have juniors uh, work through the system or through the junior year or into the summer or even beginning the senior year, we have kids who say for a variety of reasons, this is no longer the right thing for me. And we get it. We totally get it. So many things can happen. Um, and, and, and we want to be supportive of that. Um, nine times out of 10, it's really not that much of a change. It might be a few class schedule changes and that sort of thing. Um, Every once in a while, it gets awkward just because of the course selections, making sure that, that if we get all, if we decide not to do the IB diploma track, do we still have all the pieces in place we need to have the high school diploma? Um, and so, but I, I've never had a situation where we couldn't work that through. Um, our main thing we want to emphasize to all of our students who are doing the IB, considering doing the IB diploma or sign up for it, is just keep us in the loop. Talk to Lancaster if you have thoughts or ideas or concerns, grab me touch base with Mrs. Salisbury or Mr. Frank or your counselor, just to make sure, because we are, like we've talked about, there are gonna be hard patches at times. Um, and we wanna make sure we support all of our students um, so that we work and work through them. And if we work through them successfully and keep on rolling to the diploma, great. And if we choose no longer to do the diploma, that's okay too. Um, it's the important part is really just communicating honestly with each other. Yeah. I would just jump in not only reaching out to instructors and keeping them in the loop, but if you're a parent of a, of a younger student, freshman, um, sophomore, or even juniors, like in the junior year when students are deciding um, who are non-IB students, like non-IB diploma track students are, who are interested in taking additional IB courses, um, if you really want to know, like, how things are going, you ask your friends, you know, ask students who have been through the program, they have lived through the experience and they have a lot, a wealth of information to be able to give to those students about how they felt, how, what parts were difficult, how they were able to overcome those challenges and they can learn a lot from their experience. So I, um, again, Alex and Molly can testify <laughs> to the, the amount of work and, you know, what they're able to handle, what they're not able to handle, what's difficult and, and uh, really reaching out to them for for support. Can I can I just jump in really quickly since we I've taken so much of of Alex and Molly's time uh, this evening, and I'm sure they have they have homework and, and things that they need to get to. But um, first off, I thank you so much for for being here and, and giving us your insight. Could you just really quickly before we go, can you just um, if you've made a decision on, on schools yet or uh, a decision on like majors and whatnot and, and what your future plans are? Um, I can start off. I haven't made a decision on college. Um, I'm still waiting uh, for a couple more decisions, um, but I have gotten decisions back and got accepted to some good schools um, that I'm happy about. Um, and I've decided to do information systems as my major, which is um, generally part of business, uh, but it's also kind of a mix with technology. Um, and at every single school that um, I applied to, I know that they're going to take IB credit um, from tests as long as I score well. Uh, they will give credit for those things. So um, I think that's the best thing uh, for me about that is that um, like my sisters who had, um, I think, half of a year taken off of college. Yep. Thanks, Alex. Molly? I have decided I'm going to Michigan State in the fall. I'm very excited for that. Um, uh, I'm looking through like the business route, possibly finance is probably my number one choice right now, looking into financial advising and something like that. Um, I'm really excited. My, like Alex said, I had an older brother. He didn't go through the diploma route, but he went 
through some IB courses. He goes to the University of Massachusetts right now. And he went there with 12 credit hours just from two tests that he took, IB English and IB Spanish. So right now he's supposed to be a sophomore. He's technically a junior. He might be able to start his master's earlier. So even if you're not looking at like the diploma route, definitely some IB, some HL classes, taking those tests to get the credit is something that's always useful for sure. Awesome. Thank you so, so much to, to the two of you and Molly who had to go. So appreciate your time. Um, so I'll let you guys go so that you guys can take care of your business and homework and whatnot. Uh, but thanks again, guys. You both are wonderful. Thanks so much for taking your time. See ya. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, another really practical question. So last year, in this meeting, you said something about returning the money for the tests when they complete and pass six IB courses. Is that policy still in place? Yes, um, that's only for students that are pursuing the full diploma. And I, I, basically the, the, the policy is not necessarily, we feel that we are going to return the test fees to any diploma uh, candidate that we feel puts forth um, the effort towards the diploma. So it is not dependent upon passing every single test, um, but it's for those students who, who dedicate themselves to doing the full diploma and um, put forth, in, in our opinion, um, all of the effort they can towards, towards achieving that diploma. Thank you. Um, other really specific questions here. Um, can a research project, and I think they're referring to the extended essay, be a question related to literature or politics? That one's an easy one. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate at all? 100%. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, some of the topics that the students have come up with are unbelievable. Like, I just can't even. <laughs> I, I, it's wonderful. Um, yeah. the, the program and what they're able to do is amazing. Um, another question specifically, are CAS hours and the extended essay for students taking the IB diploma only? Can anybody participate in those activities? Go ahead, Eric. Oh, yeah, great question. So yeah, when we talk about CAS activities, that is to say those creativity activity service, um, that's like community service, the, the kids are involved in, yeah, anyone can do those activities. So for example, like one of the things that we look for Ivy Diploma kids to do is to lead a CAS activity and, and they pull in all of their friends to be involved with in that activity as well. So yes, we definitely want to get as much engagement with our kids outside the classroom like that as possible. Yeah, and a lot of our, our students that are doing those same sort of clubs or activities are not necessarily IB diploma students either. And so some of the clubs and, and service hours and things that kids are participating in are school-wide or, or basically open to anybody that wants to participate. So uh, Molly Ross was talking about leading the Little Dresses for Africa uh, club and, and she has students that are in NHS, she has kids that are diploma kids, she has kids that don't do any of those and just wanna participate and, and give back. So yeah, there, a lot of these opportunities are really open to, to anybody in our school. What about the extended essay? The extended essay, like we had talked about, is, is particularly for our diploma kids. Um, and it's because we're pairing them with a faculty advisor. And, and it's a tough, long, rigorous process. But it's, it's something that gets scored towards the diploma. And so a student that's not doing the diploma, um, that's not going towards anything for them because it's not part of a class for a student that's not doing the diploma. Do you want to add to that, Eric? I if would I add. To, oh, yeah, please do. I, don't I mean, any. if somebody wants to know, like, if somebody wants to know about something, they're always welcome to research it and write a paper because that's what it is essentially is like conducting their own research and then putting it on paper and i mean we always encourage students to do that but in terms of the extended essay process and what it goes towards like eric was saying um it is for them to develop those skills 
Um, but it's also a, it's a required component of the, the diploma program. And um, also because they're paired with a faculty advisor. That advisor yeah. is putting a lot of time and effort and, and time away from the classroom into working with that student on research. And, and, and so, you know, for me, um, I'm advising three extended essays. Last year I did six. And so just to have anybody do that and, and want to do more, it becomes difficult to have enough staff members to, to effectively manage those if it's people that aren't doing the diploma. Mm -hmm. um, another question is how many hours specifically are required for CAS? There used to be a requirement of 150 hours and they've eliminated that um, in terms of the number of hours. They just want experiences in each one of those areas. They want a good mix of creative hours. They want a good mix of activity hours and they want a good mix of, of service hours. And so in the past, it used to be you needed 50, 50, 50. And I'd be kind of changed their course and because some students were doing more activity hours or some were doing a massive amount of service hours. They just want a well-rounded student. They want students participating in each aspect of, of, of CAS um, to, to, like we said, effectively, we want them to sweat. We want them to, to, to be active. We want them to give back to their community. We want them to, to be creative or find some sort of creative outlet for themselves. So for each kid, that's different. Thanks. Um, this is a question about credits and graduation requirements. If I'm a student who takes, um, an IB course in their senior year, does that count as a credit? for a junior year science class? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, well, really, as far as graduation requirements, um, a junior and senior year, it's not, it doesn't have to be done in either the junior year or senior year. So, so that distinction is, is probably not very helpful, um, but just know that as long as you finish your graduation requirements before you graduate, you're absolutely fine. Thank you. Um, got a question about if I, again, CAMSI related, if I'm a student who's in CAMSI, how should I decide which IB courses to take? Any yeah. That? yeah, exactly. Well, the two of them are, two or three are fairly simple, right? I mean, we all have to take English um, for a high school graduation um, in the state of Michigan. Um, and so taking IB English HL1 and taking IB English HL2, if you feel like that that's something the right thing for you, that seems like a almost a no-brainer. Um, many of our IB Diploma kids take IB 20th Century, excuse me, many of our CAMC kids take IB 20th Century World History because it's an IB class, but also satisfies a graduation requirement. So that seems pretty simple. And many of our CAMC kids do a uh, second language, a world language here. Um, and so taking IB Spanish 4 or IB Spanish 5 or taking IB French 4 and IB French 5 makes sense too. So right there, there's two or three classes that would fill up in a CAMC student's schedule right here at Port Central High School. But again, there are others too. Um, the main thing, we just want them to choose the classes that they want. Um, they get the experience they need for do whatever they want to do after they leave. Yeah, and, and if you look at those groups that we had talked about, typically the classes they're taking at Portage Central are group one, group two, and group three. Um, and, and Mr. Albertus alluded to that. English, history, psychology, business, and then, uh, and then the foreign languages, uh, because their math and their science are, are being taken care of at CAMSI. Okay, now we've got some of the, well, an easy one. What percentage of our population takes the, the full IB diploma? It varies yeah. a little bit on, on the year. You know, we, we've had anywhere from 35 to 50 or more kids do the diploma. Um, so I think I, like a, a decent statistic to, to follow suit over the course of years that I is I would say if we have 300 to 350 kids per class, you're looking anywhere from probably 10 to 15 percent of our of each class that are pursuing the full diploma. Thank you. Um, these other ones are again uh, more specific to individual students, I think, but. Um, one is asking about ninth graders going to Northern for band, something about Northern offering auditions to get into advanced ensembles for ninth grade. 
I don't know anything about that. Sorry. <laughs> That's a great question for our Northern friends, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then the other one is ATIP. There are two more and they're ATIP related. Um, one of them is, uh, where did it go? If a student takes ATIP English in ninth grade, does that count towards their four years of English? I think, I don't think that that question's at all about the IB program. Mm -hmm. No, I think, but I think the question is the answer is yes. I mean, we, yeah. we, every year we have a handful of kids do ATIP in, in ninth grade and do English, and certainly that meets the graduation requirements. I think, I, I just want to make sure that we answer it differently too. Like, would an ATIP English class count towards, and I know you've already answered it, but we'll answer it again since we're on this question. Would an ATIP English class count for I, toward the IB program if a student was oh. doing? Okay. Thank no, you. it would not. Yep. Great question. And then uh, if, if I am an ATIP English student, what should I take in terms of IB English? And I think, I think we've already kind of answered this one, but it might be helpful maybe to describe the IB English program as an HL, like the two-year thing? Um, well, the, probably the only thing to keep in mind is that um, let's say someone does do ATIP um, and does ATIP in English in seventh and eighth grade, and that's wonderful, in ninth grade too. Um, but the only thing probably to keep in mind is like Eric said at the beginning, um, IB, the IB program starts with juniors and seniors. So um, you wouldn't be able to access like IB English HL1, that junior level class, until your junior year. Um, so we would just want to think through what would be best for that student and that family um, as far as English in ninth and 10th grade. Yeah, we've had that question before, and sometimes the answer is dual enrollment. Sometimes it's another English class like creative writing or something like that um, during the sophomore year before they would start IB English as a, as a junior. Okay, let me scan one more time here. I think that we've answered everything. You're doing great. That yeah, would be lost without you, Tamla. I, <laughs> I don't think know so. that's true. <laughs> I don't think so. I think we're. I think we're good. How about this one? Um, what do you like most about being an IB coordinator, Mr. Lancaster? Um, the kids. Uh, I think number one, watching the kids be. Which dog back there? Yes, <laughs> watching the kids, yeah. uh, watching the kids be successful, watching them challenge themselves, watching them overcome adversity, uh, hearing them come back and tell us how how successful they've become, how college has has become a breeze for them, and and just hearing all the great things that that they've done, and and to see the the wonderful things that come out of this program, like some of the extended essays that I read are just amazing to think that this is being written by a high schooler in just in terms of that topic and the research that they're doing. And, and so um, I think for me that, that that's that's the greatest thing about about this position. Mr. Albertus, anything anything left? We I think we're done in terms yeah, of our I think we're done. Um, uh, And I'm so grateful. And if I could just go on with Eric said, I mean, like I said, two of my three kids did the full IV diploma, and they were better as a result of it. Um, especially my daughter, who at any point during that IV diploma, I could have wrung her neck, um, <laughs> and she figured it out. She worked through the hard times, and she figured. And we were really grateful for the for the, the the dozen of you who hung on with us here to the very end. Like we said, we weren't leaving until we feel like we could address every question. But this is just the beginning of a conversation. Um, hopefully, now that hopefully some of you already knew us and feel comfortable asking all these questions, um, especially for those of you who don't know us. Um, hopefully, now you know us a little bit better um, and about the work that we do here. And in the days and weeks and months ahead. As if you, whenever you have thoughts or questions or concerns, ideas, please do not ever hesitate to reach out to Tama or Eric or me anytime, and we will do everything we can um, to be supportive. Um, any other parting shots or thoughts or questions before we wrap up for this evening? We do have a hand raised. We do? Well, that's fine. Yes. Sorry, I can't figure out how to uh, type in a question. Just wondered, um, it looks like this is being recorded. Where can we find the recording? Yes. As soon as Eric pulls it together, he's going to send me the links and I'm going to send it out in our Thursday. Every week we send out a Mustang Minutes 
And those links will be right in that Mustang Minute. So watch your email. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for asking. Any other questions? This was fun. I kind of want to do some more questions, but I know. Yeah. The questions <laughs> part is the is the best part. It really is. All right. Well, thank you so much, folks. Have a wonderful. I was going to say have a safe drive home, but no, you're home. <laughs> All right. So thank just, you, everybody. Appreciate your time. All right. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.